instances for myself. And there's just some things I wanted to say about the topic. And I hope it can be comforting for you. Or to somebody else. And that is the subject of loss. Grief. Let's talk about loss for a moment. How do we define loss exactly? Without looking it up in the dictionary, how would you as a person define it? I know for me it can have at least two different meanings. One of them being, of course, you might have misplaced a mundane or a precious object to you. And of course, when it comes to that particular situation, um, it's not as dire or serious. You either go looking for this lost object or possession. Or you replace it. Or you come to terms that it is gone and you just move on from it. Kind of simple, right? Maybe you lost a book or maybe it's a bit more serious and maybe you lost an heirloom or something that's irreplaceable to you. Maybe it was a photo album or something that had pictures of it that you have no copies of. You sit down and you, you, you dwell on it. Um, perhaps you do grieve in a sense for the loss of at least memories in that scenario. But you do still sit and you process this. And you have to move on at some point. So there's one definition of loss. Another definition, or another instance of it, I should say, is perhaps the loss of a family member or a loved one. Whether it is to death or Maybe the loss of a relationship, or maybe just the loss of um, the, the person. Maybe the person has also lost their way. Um, and how do we go about contemplating that particular um, definition of it? Let's see. If we have lost someone to death, of course, that could be very... That could be very debilitating on you and your family and those who have lost this person. Those who have loved this person. It could be debilitating in a sense that it could weigh on you mentally, physically, spiritually and it's a process and maybe you saw this particular loss coming maybe it just happened suddenly and it completely 
takes you by surprise. Well, for shock, I should say. And, um, and the best thing to do with that particular kind of loss is, of course, you want to be able to have your grieving, period. You want to let all the stages of grief take their place, let the faces play out. <sighs> and there are multiple stages of it. And I think this can also apply for other instances of loss as well and grief. I guess what I'm more or less getting at is when it comes to someone passing away you you would ideally want to surround yourself with those who are also grieving with you over this person you want to comfort each other you want to surround yourself with your family and maybe your friends because you do not want to dwell on this alone. It's much more... Um, it, it weighs more heavily when you're alone. And if you're isolating yourself. The silence of the house you might be in. Maybe the silence starts to unsettle you and make the process of dealing with your newfound loneliness after losing this person uh, or this part of your family anyhow maybe it makes it much more difficult to endure so do not go at this alone do not hide and if you feel like you need to reach out to those others who are grieving with you so let's see what's another instance of loss we can think about besides two death We could think about loss of a relationship. I think that's one of the more common forms of loss in multiple ways. Perhaps you have spent years or maybe it's even been just a month for you. You have spent a period of time in this relationship. Uh, you have invested yourself into it. You invest yourself, your time, your energy, your feelings into this relationship, into this person. And no matter which party is to blame, maybe somehow the relationship just does not work out. There's a number of different instances that this can occur. Maybe you made a mistake. Maybe you have worked on yourself as a person and you have grown and you have changed and maybe uh, this person was not able to really grow with you or maybe they are lingering in a place that is no longer reachable for you if that makes any sense 
maybe they are struggling themselves with their own problems. And no matter how much you want to help this person, maybe, maybe it gets to the point where you find you can't really help them as much as you think you can. And it just puts a strain, at the very least, on the relationship. Maybe, maybe this person has hurt you in some way. Maybe they mistreated you. Maybe they betrayed you. Maybe they made a mistake themselves and you have a hard time, perhaps, forgiving them or reconciling with them. And it still um, cost the relationship in some way. And again, you know, I think a really great solution to this is obviously, no matter how long you've spent in this relationship with this person, I think it's good to focus on yourself. Think about how you can help yourself, how you can better yourself, how you can how you can move on if need be. Maybe you have to think about some choices that you haven't thought about in a very long time, or maybe there's um, a task you have to undergo that's very frightening for you. And um, of course, yes, the best thing you can do is reach out to friends, to other family, if you feel comfortable doing so. Um, maybe other loved ones. You do not want to keep this all bottled up inside. You do want to reach out. And let, let them tell you things. Let them give you advice. Even if it's sometimes things that you do not want to hear. At least let it, at least let it sit in your brain for a while. Let it soak in. Absorb it. Absorb what they have to say. And you, of course, it's up to you whether you want to take this advice or some of their advice. Or you just want to think about it. Oh, and maybe... Maybe your brain is in a fog, and maybe it's very difficult right now to even process a lot of this. And, um, do not beat yourself up. We are all human, and sometimes being human means we are not perfect. We do make errors in our judgment. Or we decide to make choices that just happen to. It may benefit us, but it can hurt, of course, the person that we're Talk to somebody, 
you know, don't go at this alone and process everything. Because as I said, even with the subject of someone passing away, you do not want to go through processing the pain of loss alone. And, um, if you do go at it alone, it's going to eat you up. It's going to erode at you. And that's not healthy. Find healthy coping mechanisms. Find healthy outlets that can help you better move on from this situation and this particular form of loss. Maybe something else to think about. This may be a different sense of loss. Maybe you've been going through the loss of a part of even you. Maybe you've been going through some changes in your life. Whether they're good changes or bad changes. Whether they're healthy changes. Or maybe changes that are holding you back. But I think another form of loss could be the loss of a part of yourself, maybe a part of your personality. Let's take a look at um, maybe a couple of different examples, or at least one example. And maybe there's like one or one good kind of loss with this, a healthy type of loss. And maybe, of course, there's the more negative type, if I'm making any sense at all. Maybe you spent a great deal of years struggling. thinking that you are worthless. Maybe all this negativity has helped you practice thinking that you are nothing. That you are nobody. And maybe when you look in the mirror, you spent so long thinking that you were an ugly monster or someone entirely undesirable. So maybe whenever the motivation or the drive does hit you, whatever inspires you to do so, maybe you decide that it's time to make some Changes. Constructive changes. So maybe, maybe you decide to just start exercising. Maybe you decide to change your diet. Maybe you decide that you would like to practice going out and being social and being around other people. Maybe loneliness has been a coping mechanism for you. So you go through however long of a period working on yourself. You lose weight. You change your, some of your habits. Maybe you start setting a routine for yourself. Um, And you just go through all these more positive changes 
No matter how hard it is, no matter how long a kid takes or how frustrating the struggle of it can be, you go through it and you stay determined and you see results. An example of a good type of loss is knowing when you look in the mirror and you see yourself and you see yourself you see the results of this work you have put into yourself. And it may be hard for you to comprehend or come to terms to, but you have loss. You have gone through the loss of those negative parts of yourself, the unhealthy, unhealthier parts of yourself that part of yourself that you had become too familiar with. That's a constructive um, loss. It's, and I know it can be confusing if you are in such a situation. And it may take time and work on your part to gain newfound confidence. Maybe you'll find yourself being more vulnerable Maybe you're still struggling with feeling a sense of vulnerability. Knowing that the canvas that you are painted on is so beautiful. And yet, you can't help but look at it and still want to cling to the old image, the old painting of yourself. And maybe taking that same situation, maybe a negative aspect of a loss of yourself could be, maybe, maybe you lost a part of your personality that others found endearing for you. Maybe you used to be incredibly shy. Or maybe you were perhaps very humble. And then you find you go through these changes to otherwise further improve yourself and your confidence. And maybe um, something to think about is the loss can be negative in a way that you have lost a portion of yourself that maybe others have gotten to know about you. And maybe for them, it's very hard to process that you have changed, whether it's for the better or for the worse, that you have changed. So, of course, maybe the solution to that is maybe to reevaluate yourself. Maybe talk with those who may see this in yourself. Talk with your friends, loved ones, again. I think talking is so important in any case, with any of this. But I do want you to know that no matter what type of loss you are going through, you matter. What you are feeling matters. You are validated. You will get through this and you can be strong and I believe in you. Let's believe in each other, okay? We will believe that we
we could get stronger, that we could get through this grief or loss you are finding in your life. And you will process it. You will grow from it. You will learn from it. And maybe it can help you teach others down the road who may be facing the very same things. But you will not give up. You cannot afford to give up on yourself and on those you care about. Whatever that means to you. And I'm going to leave it on that note over tonight. I wanted to talk about this for a great deal. So, I appreciate you letting me sit down here and talk to you one-on-one -on -one tonight. And I hope this has helped you in some way. I hope it helps you think about a lot of things and helped you come to certain decisions. Or helped you go through the process a little easier. And I want to wish you a very good night. sweet dreams. So good night to you. Good night. Sweet dreams. Mark.